Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Anti-Cheese, where today we're going to go over some Zerg versus Terran builds. Today we're going to cover Proxy 2 racks, we're going to cover Proxy 4 racks, and we're going to cover 2 on 1. Now I would not consider 2 on 1 a cheese in any way, shape, or form. It's not even an all-in. It can be, but it's realistically just an opener. However, it was heavily requested on Reddit that I cover 2 on 1, so I'm going to comply. Let's go over it, because it's really simple to hold once you know what you're doing. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So before we start the replay, let's talk about what it is. First up, we have Proxy 2 Racks. Now, Proxy 2 Racks, from a Terran's perspective, they're going to build two barracks on your side of the map. The goal of this is to pump out Marines, and with the two SCVs they use to build the barracks, build bunkers in front of your natural to snipe it, and then contain you on one base as long as humanly possible while they macro up behind it and get into a very advantageous position. In a sense, it's almost like a 12 pool for a Terran's perspective, because they're sacrificing their early economy to damage yours and contain you in a position where they can get further ahead without much fear. Now, let's take a look at what it is. All right, so let's look at scouting it. How do we scout it? Well, as I said before in my introduction video, the first overlord is going across the map to the pervert pillar. It can take a little bit of an indirect path, but for the most part, we want to get it there as quickly as possible. So as you can see, that's where it's queued up. Our second overlord is going to go to the most common proxy spots. Now, you're not always going to scout it. There will be times where you miss it. But as long as we are conscientiously aware that the second overlord needs to at least scout for proxies, we should find it most of the time. Now, I'm going to speed it up. We're going to put it on my perspective. Pause. So this is what scouting it looks like. This is a fairly common proxy spot. I'm not 100% on the new maps where the, you know, the stock standard proxy spots are going to be, but from my limited experience playing on them, this is a really common one. And then up here is a really common one. And sometimes up here. Now, if it's really far away, like if it's at this nine o'clock base, we, <laughs> it's difficult to pull drones because we're not going to get there in time. But thankfully, for the most part, whenever I've done dealt with proxy racks, it's usually here or here, somewhere close enough where we can pull drones. So what is our initial response? Pull the drones. How many do we want to pull? I would say we have to pull enough, but not enough that we're not mining whatsoever. So again, a real safe number is between 10 and 13. Like that's a, it's a solid number. I don't actually know how many I pull. Um, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12. So, these drones, if we can, we need to take a, take a breath. You know, we're not in any immediate danger yet. So, keeping a cool, calm, collective state of mind is key. What we want to do is put two drones to attack each SCV, and the rest of the drones are just going to be attacking the racks, waiting for the Marines to pop out. The idea behind this is, yes, we are losing a lot of mining time, but we're buying time for our lings to get out. And any Marine that pops out is just going to get surrounded by the drones and it's going to die. We are going to stop the rush before it happens. Now, if these two SCVs survive, what are they going to do? They're going to come over here and they're going to try to build bunkers. If we see that, we just need to pull two more drones and or we can pull them from here and we just need to attack that SCV. We just need to prevent the bunkers going up from as long as possible. As soon as our spawning pool finishes, we need to make lings, queens, and we just need a single spine. So, the marine pops, and look, I can't even do anything about it because it's, it's stuck, right? So that's actually kind of smart on his end. But I prevent this bunker from going up, so I know I'm at an advantageous position right now. I'm not mining, so I was hope I was expecting another SCV to be right there. That's why I had that little delay on my drones. But since there isn't, we're just going to put them right back to mining at the natural so we can minimize our lost mining time. We are going to lose a lot of mining time. It's inevitable. But that's how we're going to hold this build. Okay, so, 2-1-1, what is it? 
Well, two on one is a 16 Marine drop with Stim at the five minute mark. So when I say five minutes, I mean they're leaving their base at five minutes. Now, the time when they drop can vary depending on the rush distance, depending on the map, but typically you can expect it around the five minute 20 mark to the five minute 30 mark. Again, this could all be different depending on your opponent's skill level as well, but let's just prepare for the normal, shall we? So how do we scout 2 on one And what is the goal of 2 one well, the goal of 2-on-1, -on realistically, is to just get damage done, push back the creep, and ideally, if they can, snipe the third. But realistically, 2-on-1's been so figured out that they usually don't even get that. They usually are just able to push back the creep, body check a little bit, and transition into a normal macro game themselves. There's different versions of 2-on-1. There's a 3-racks 2-on-1. There's a 2-base committed 2-on-1 doesn't really matter because the initial attack is always going to be the same and after we've held the initial attack we're gonna need to scout again to see what the next game plan is but how do we scout two on one more importantly so we're gonna put it on my vision so as you can see i've got one overlord positioned outside of his main and i've got one on the pervert pillar so a really good time to scout is right around the 3 minute 30 second mark. So I'm going to actually send them both in. We lose this one. But if we only had this one, all we would have seen, we actually would have seen both. But this one's coming in. When you see two Raxes like this, especially one with a tech lab on it and something's upgrading, this is 2 on one There's no doubt about it. And 2 on one means two barracks, one factory, one starport. So, what do we do when we scout it? Our initial response is nothing. We just need to make drones. This is in this is just a fantastic opener for a Zerg player. Because again, at the time when it came out, when Beyond invented this, it was terrifying. But it's been so long, because he started doing this in 2016, that it's quite well figured out. All we need to do is drone continuous queen production and we don't need to stop droning until the four minute 30 mark that's it that is our initial response we need to get it into our head when we see this oh i can drone we're just going to non-stop make queens drone till four minutes 30 seconds and then we're going to continue nothing but ling production until we hold it how are we going to hold it well let's speed it up so we've got queens here versus Terran. There really isn't a terrible amount of queens that we can have. Queens are always useful. And at the top of the ladder, again, they're one of the most complained about units in the game. And at the bottom of the ladder, they're so underutilized and underused. Queens do not have to be stuck at the waist to a hatchery. They have legs and on creep, they can move at a decent speed. So versus Terran, Ideally, what I like to do is go up to six to eight creep spreading queens and then one per base for injects. Six to eight queens will hold almost all Terran aggression if they are in position properly. We are still droning, as you can see. I don't even stop droning until right around now. So now I'm starting link production. So I know that it's coming. So what do I do? I split up a couple lings, and I just have them on hold position in the, like, you know, I have three lings on hold position across the map. I'm just trying to see where it's coming from. That's the biggest point of contention, because normally a two on one drop can go in the main and they can try and snipe a bunch of workers and then pick back up. But a lot of the times what you're going to see more likely is they're going to drop outside of range of the third, then they're going to stim up, clear back the creep and pressure the third. But because we don't know, we don't know. So we kind of have to try and be on the lookout. When it comes, I'll show you. So we saw it. He walked past our link, so we know where we're in, where it's coming from. So we move into position. Our queens here, we have six queens and a big ball of wings. Now this is a little different. He has a widow mine with it. It's not a big deal. Most of the time it doesn't. Two on one is strictly 16 Marines and two medevacs, but he has a widow mine with it. It's not that big of a deal. So I try and snipe it, but I ended up losing quite a bit of lings. It really wasn't worth it, but I tried to jump on it. So how do we micro this? The lings can be A-moved on the Marines. The Queens 
don't need to be fighting the Marines. The Queens need to be targeting the Medivacs. If we can kill the Medivacs, these Marines can no longer heal, so every stim is permanent damage, and they can't pick up and fly anywhere else. So the Queens just need to be attacking the Medivacs, the Lings need to be attacking the Marines, and that's it. That's how we hold. We don't need Banelings, we don't need anything fancy, we don't need Spines, we literally just need Lings and Queens. So I try and split up my Lings to deal with that mine shot. It never ends up coming, but even though I lost a few Lings, I shaved away a lot of those Marines, and now this is no longer a threat. These six Queens can hold this, no problem. And that's 2 on one It's held. So, how do we follow up? Well, the world's your oyster in this situation. We can go for an all-in if that's how you want to play, but this was just an opener from the Terran. And I think at lower levels, they just don't understand how to hold this or how to scout it and respond to it properly. And I think that's why it was so heavily requested. But this really isn't a cheese and this really isn't an all-in. This is just a simple build opener for a Terran player. So my best suggestion to you once we hold how to follow up is simply continue droning. Go into a macro game. Do what you're comfortable with. If you want to play Roach Ravager or Roach Hydra, play that. If you want to play Ling Bane Muto, play it. The world's your oyster. All right. Now moving on, let's talk about our final build for the video. Proxy for Rax. All right, so before we start the replay, let's talk about it. What is a Proxy for Rax? Well, Proxy for Rax is an all-in, one-base build that a Terran will do to a Zerg player. Unlike the Proxy 2 Racks, this is not just a pressure opening, like a 12 pool to try and get ahead. This is committed. This is a one base all in. There is no transitioning out of this. And if they do transition out of it, it's probably because they either got way too much damage done so that they can, or you didn't punish them and you let them get ahead. But realistically, this is always going to be a one base all in attack. What does it consist of? non-stop marines that's it likely they'll add some bunkers too but it's just going to be a marine bunker push just like the two racks except it's one base all in committed there's going to be double the amount of marines how do we scout it well just like we did the proxy two racks our second overlord is looking for the proxies what do we see three this time now i mean he said it in chat but a lot of the times you will have a terran player who builds one at home that way the first overlord that goes across the map that jedi mind tricks they're trying to sell it as a more legit build if we ever see more than one rax being proxied sorry let me rephrase that because i screwed up if we ever see more than two raxes being proxied we know this is an all-in committed one base attack Yes, there's an infinite number of builds that this could be. Yes, there's an infinite number of ways that this isn't a one base all in when you're below fucking masters or something like that. I don't care. We're talking about the normal. We're t Even if you are a Silver League player, I want you responding the same mentality and the same knowledge as a Grandmaster player. Because if you start with that mentality, there's no adjustment period and you will get better much faster. We see more than two Raxes being proxied, one base. Keep it simple. Now, what is our initial response? Okay, so unlike the proxy two Rax, this one, I see the position he's building the, uh, the barracks in, and it's... Okay, so unlike the proxy two Rax, I can see the position he's building the barracks in. It's going to be difficult for me to pull the drones and get anything done. So... I make the painful decision not to. And you know what? If you can pull the drones, it's still a good idea. It's the exact same as a proxy two racks in that initial response. But see how he's building them so tight against the wall? If you see something like this, I mean, if you want to keep it standard and always respond the same way, pull the drone, see what you can do. But I know that I'm not going to get much done. I might be able to shut this one down, but this one's already done in producing Marines, so... All it has to do is finish, get stuck in here, and it'll be able to slowly whittle away my workers. So I decide not to. And again, we know that this is a one base all in. So our initial response either has to be pull the drones or don't and get spines. I don't cancel my natural. And there's a big reason why I don't 
cancel my natural. Yes, it would be nice to get those 300 minerals back. And yes, I know it's going to be sacrificed and die. But one of the big reasons is it's going to keep his attention down here so that I can get spines up safely. If I immediately cancel this, he's not going to spend any time down here and he's going to immediately move up the ramp and I'm not ready yet. So I don't want that. So that's one big reason. The second big reason is even though I know it's going to die, it's going to take a little while for him to kill it. So I'll be able to get more Zerglings and I'll be able to get an extra queen out of it. These are all defenses that we absolutely need. When you're up against a one base all in, there is no over committing to defense. This person is all in. They are either going to win the game or lose the game off of this single push. There's a difference when you talk about the two racks because it's not an all in. It's just a committed pressure opener. If I make eight spines, he doesn't even have to do any damage. He can just go home. This is a lot different. There, he's not transitioning out of this. So can I make eight spines? Yes, but I don't want to make them all off the bat because I don't want to lose all my mining time. But you can go up to eight spines and still be okay is what I'm trying to say. There's no over committing to the defense. All we have to do is hold this push to win the game. So how are we going to hold? Well, all we need is our spines, our lings, and our queens, and we just need to buy time. We do not need to fight this. We are not under any economic pressure right now. And yes, it sucks we're going to lose our natural, but we are still mining on one base saturation. So I'm just getting up spines. I'm getting up queens. And really importantly, one of these queens can drop a creep tumor. The biggest reason for this is as much as this area as we can creep as possible, the better. Because now he can't get any bunkers up here as easily without scanning and pushing it back. That's just a pro gamer move right there. So as you can see, the bunkers are going up. The Marines are not stopping producing. And this one at home is still rallying. They're all coming across the map. He's not transitioning. This is just a one base build. He still has absolutely no gas. So we just need to continue buying time. We want to delay this fight as long as humanly possible because we know nothing is going to change. Yes, he's going to get more and more Marines, but we have high grounded. We have the high ground position. We have defenders advantage. We've got spines and queens and lings. This is a choke point. When we talk about choke points, it's concave versus convex. If he has a bunch of Marines right here, and we have a bunch of Spines and Queens up here, there's more surface area up here, so more things can attack at once. Whereas his Marines in this choke are quite literally choked, so there's only a few in the front that can attack, meanwhile the ones in the back are just dancing around being useless, they're not contributing to the fight. So he knows he can't force his way up this ramp until he has a good chunk of units. So we're just buying time. We're going to continue producing lings. We're going to get ling speed. We're not, we don't need to fight until ling speed's done. And I'm going to speed it up because you're going to see what happens. Now, I get a Bane Nest. Why? Because how we're going to counterattack once we hold this, what our follow-up is, is a counterattack, sorry, because this is a one base all in. All of his production is on my side of the map. So if we kill all these Marines, he's got almost nothing at home. So once we hold, we just simply move across the map and kill him. So we just need to keep buying more time. I get the Baneling Nest because, again, we have high ground vision and there's a big threat of him walking up, connecting with a Baneling and losing a bunch of his Marines. So the game goes on and on and on and on. I just, I even told him because I just wanted to make sure that he wasn't actually going to cheese me out and expand and go into a normal game. But this is this is normally how it's done. Now, he's being very cautious. He's waiting to get more and more Marines. As you can see, he's already got 26, up to 30. That's a big number of Marines. But he knows he can't get bunkers up on the high ground. So what do we need to do? Continue Zergling and Queen production. There is no over committing to defending a one base all in attack. Now, I'm going to show you what ends up happening. Now, you can get fancy with it if you want, but at the end of the day, there's no way that these Marines are getting up this ramp with Banelings, 
queens and spines in position without taking heavy losses, he's not going to bust me. It's going to be difficult. So what do I do? I know he's eventually going to try. So I get Burrow. And I'm going to Burrow some Banelings here. Do we need to? Fuck no. This is me just being fancy. You can do whatever you want with it, but you don't have to. People overthink it. And they'll... One of the most common mistakes I see to something like this is they run down here and they try and clear it out. And we're taking a fight on the Terran's advantage and we lose everything. Then they just jump out of the bunkers, come up and kill us. We don't need to do that. We still have our Overlord in position here. We still know he hasn't expanded. And if he has, he's not mining yet. So we're still good. We are still fine. We wait, we wait, we wait. Being patient. This is the pro gamer move. He even scans. He sees the pearl banelings, but he doesn't notice them. Not that it matters. It really doesn't. But I wait. I wait. The trigger discipline. There we go. We don't want to get the cat out of the bag too soon. I'm going to let him take those spines. Kaboom. Pause. How many units does he have? Well, he just lost 38 Marines. He now has 28 Marines, but that's okay. He just lost so many Marines that all we have to do right now is run out of here, counterattack, and win the game. GG well played. That's it. All right. All right. And that about ends this video as I sit here in Premiere editing it. Um, I hope you learned something. Good luck. Have fun. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you want to see a build covered, something like that, please leave a comment below. Please consider subscribing if you liked what you saw. Most importantly, have fun.